excitement, sadness, confusion, joy. Poi can be used to express a lot of different kinds of emotions, but it takes some insight to know exactly how to do it. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the ways that you can make your spinning reflect your inner world so that it gets seen by the outer world. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. In this video, I want to get us beyond simply doing tricks or transitions to being in a place where we can actually express our feelings through our movement. But before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyrotera Light Toys, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing businesses and what they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And special thanks to non-business friends of the channel, Johnny Howard, Lane Machinsky, and Becca Beckonen. Thank you all so very much for your support for my work and my mission. It has been seven months since I shared my last video on composing poi choreography and movement. I didn't mean for it to take so long, and I'll work to make sure that there's a smaller gap between this and the next video in the series. But I do just want to take a moment to highlight some of the stuff that came out of that video, because it's going to be really important here too. Fundamentally, I think that while poi tricks, transitions, and combos are awesome, I also really envy dancers for their ability to tell a story or express their feelings through their movement, and I think we could use some of that in the poi world too. Like I said in that last video, the thing that I want to see is poi becoming an extension of the performer, rather than an inanimate object that is treated as the other. There's no reason that poi cannot be an extension of everything that we have to say, and as much a part of us as our arms and feet. One of the tools available to us in the poi dance realm is the capacity to take different timing and direction modes, as well as poi shapes and patterns, to build and then release tension. That was the topic of my last video, and I'll link to that down in the description as well as up in the cards if you're watching on YouTube. But I think we can also do more to get directly to moving our props in a way that conveys our emotional state to our audience, and that's what I want to tackle in this video. To talk about this, I also want to talk a little bit about something that's considered pretty esoteric, even among traditional dancers, Laban Movement Analysis. Now this is a tool that's used to analyze every, and I do mean every single move that the human body engages in. Everything from gestures to facial expressions, and its first application was understanding the breadth of what dance could create. There are a lot, and I do mean a lot of different ways that Laban analyzes movement. It's so complex that grasping it fully takes years of instruction, and people sometimes go to school specifically to learn it. But for right now, I want to focus on a single element of it, and that is effort or dynamics of movement. I swear to God this is going somewhere. Please stick with me. When it comes to effort, Laban recognizes four major categories with the spectrum going back and forth between two extremes for each. When it comes to an object traveling through space, it can travel directly between two points in a straight line, or it can find its way there more circuitously or along a curve. This is direct versus indirect motion. Next, there's the movement of the body through time. Is a movement being performed quickly, or is it being performed more slowly or in a sustained fashion? There's also the weight of movement, which can range from strong movements with a great deal of force behind them to light movements that feel much more relaxed. Finally, there's the flow of movement, something poi spinners and flow artists know absolutely nothing about, right? Here, the question is whether the movement is bounded with a clear beginning and end, or whether it's more free-flowing, like a run-on sentence. By themselves, these four aspects of movement describe a lot of ways that we can move, but what do they have to say about how we express movement? Quite a lot, actually. Because poi have to be continuously swung around to stay in motion, we are just a little bit hamstrung in what we can do with them. No movements can be slow enough that the poi can't complete being swung over the hand unless that's our intention, and there are certain movements that are physically impossible due to gravity then but we can still make do with what we have access to. In addition, the poi patterns and tricks most likely to be useful for our purposes are those that involve a lot of hand movements in space. From flowers to body tracers and the like, we're going to be mostly out of the realm of weaves and butterflies for this. 
So let's start by exploring direct and indirect motion with poi. Try taking a couple tricks that you feel very comfortable with and explore moving your hands directly from point to point in them versus taking an indirect route. One of my favorite ways to explore this is with Zan's diamond. Zan himself has said that part of his motivation for exploring patterns made out of linear extensions was to add more direct movement to his spinning and broaden his palette of movement. And the thing is, you can also perform this pattern with indirect movements as well, taking it closer to third order motion territory. I personally find that moving my hand directly between two different points while spinning the poi can feel very sharp, aggressive, or exciting, depending on how I tweak it. By contrast, moving my hand in an indirect fashion, such as along a curve, changes the feel entirely to become something more languid, relaxed, or softer. Now, it does have to be said that we have the option of doing direct and indirect motion with the poi too, but it tends to wind up being just a little bit more complicated. Most flower-based tricks involve the use of indirect movements because, quite frankly, that's just what we get when we spin poi. Everything is curved. Our bodies can be creating direct movements while the poi are exploring indirect movements. The contrast between the two can be quite interesting. But some poi tricks do offer us the opportunity to perform direct movements. For example, stalls, linear isolations, pendulums, horizontal plane tricks, and toroids all present the audience with more straight as opposed to curved lines. You can play with some very curved, flowy poi tricks before abruptly shifting into lots of stalls or toroids to change the feel of what you're doing. There's actually so much to uncover here that I'll be devoting at least one follow-up video to it. So these are some of the many ways that direct and indirect movements can be used with poi. What about how they're performed in time? That is, rapid motions versus slower ones. We are a little bit luckier in this category, as the movement of the hands in poi tends to be aligned when we talk about them moving in time. If our hands are moving slowly, then the poi are likely moving slowly too, and vice versa. Moving our hands or poi rapidly can convey many of the same emotions we explored with our direct movements. Anger and excitement, for example. But when we slow things down, other emotions start to emerge. Sadness, pensiveness, harmony, and contentment. And now that we have two different categories to work with for quality of movement, we can experiment with putting them together to make the emotions expressed through those movements even more specific. When we talked about indirect movement, it was in service of showing wonder when we're moving our hands quickly. But what if we move them slowly instead? Now those direct movements read as very calm and serene, perhaps even pensive at times. But the excitement comes back when we speed things up a bit, despite the movements traveling through space in exactly the same way. By the same token, we can revisit our direct movements and slow them down to make them feel very labored and tortured, expressing determination or struggle. Speeding them up makes them feel angry once again. See what happens when you alternate between the two and the range of motions it helps you inhabit. Now, just to put it out there, there is actually one case that I can think of that you can position the poi in hands at opposite ends of the time spectrum. Having the poi move rapidly while your body moves slowly. I experimented with this in a video I produced last year, trying to pull together elements of Japanese buto dance with poi spinning and the results looked as tortured and painful as the feelings that I was trying to express through it. This also involves spinning the poi in a way that we're usually trained not to fairly early on, so it creates a lot of tension for your audience and can make them feel very uncomfortable. Lately, as I've been playing around with lighter poi, I've honestly been experimenting much more with the dynamic range of just how much variation I can put into how I explore moving with the prop in time. I highly recommend doing this yourself. Glow sticks or pod poi are excellent for this. Now, let's talk about the weight of how we move. This one is really hard to explore with poi. Because they require such specific movements from the hands, wrists, and shoulders, it can be difficult to really explore a full range between strong and light movements here. So a lot of this is going to wind up in other parts of your body. Depending on presentation, strong movements can feel very confident when performed with direct motion and like despair when performed with indirect motion. Note the difference between that strength seeming like it's being driven by the performer versus it weighing the performer down. Lighter movements can range from feeling relaxed, languid, content, spacey, or melancholy. 
the lack of weight can make someone's movements seem untethered or otherworldly. We're not going to go deep here because we're close to being done with our treatment of movement and really cool things happen when we put it all together. Finally, we can look at bounded versus flowier movements. Bounded movements have definitive beginning and ending points. Note, this can easily be done with tricks that do keep moving, but you turn every bit of them into discrete bits of movement in themselves. Again, this can make movement feel very labored or intense. Flowier movements remind me a lot of a note I always used to get from my dance teacher. You are always arriving. They are continuous and just melt into each other. There's a kind of egalitarianism in the movement here, with no section being more important than any other. Flowier movements to me kind of suggest a kind of comfortability that comes from being unbounded and freer with your movement, but your mileage may vary. Okay, so we've got four different categories of movements that each work on a binary. When we combine them together, we get 16 possible combinations that cover a huge gamut of human emotion. Let's see how. Direct movement done fast with strong intention and bounded movement comes off to me as very frustrated. Direct movement done fast with strong intention and flowier movement comes off to me as angry. Direct movement done fast with light intention and bounded movement comes off to me as engaged or focused. Direct movement done fast with light intention and flowier movement comes off as excited. Direct movement done slow with strong intention and bounded movement comes off as determined. Direct movement done slow with strong intention and flowier movement comes off as haughty or superior. Direct movement done slow with light intention and bounded movement comes off as confident. Direct movement done slow with light intention and flowier movement comes off as reflective or pensive. Indirect movement done fast with strong intention and bounded movement comes off as overwhelmed. Indirect movement done fast with strong intention and flowier movement comes off to me as concerned or, or worried. Indirect movement done fast with light intention and bounded movement comes off to me as confused. Indirect movement done fast with light intention and flowier movement comes off as excited or joyous. Indirect movement done slow with strong intention and bounded movement comes off as struggling. Indirect movement done slow with strong intention and flowier movement comes off as grumpy. Indirect movement done slow with light intention and bounded movement comes off as sad. And finally, indirect movement done slow with light intention and flowier movement comes off as happiness or contentment. There is so much here to work with. Now, you might not agree with all of my assessments here. There were absolutely elements of this that I struggled to put into words, and you may find your own interpretations of many of these types of movements land differently than mine. That's okay. Work with those intentions nonetheless. Sometimes the boundaries between these different ways of expressing emotions via movement can feel a little blurry. I'm going to strongly suggest you download one of the many wheels of emotion that are out there on the internet. Just do a quick Google search for wheel of emotion and you'll find plenty of good guides. They can help pin down emotions that are seen as opposite or complementary to each other. In many cases, what makes the difference in expressing them has to do with very subtle choices in quality of movement.
Using these techniques, you can make a poi throw feel angry. You can make a contact roll feel fun and exciting. You can make body tracers feel tortured and depressing or pensive. You now have a lot more options in your toolbox to play with for a huge variety of poi tricks. I strongly urge you to go forth and explore all of them. Make sure your audience doesn't just know what tricks you're capable of. Have an opinion on them. Express that opinion. Not only does it make your work more accessible, it also makes it more interesting. This one took a lot of work, research, and exploration to get to, and I really appreciate my Flow Circle patrons on Patreon for being my guinea pigs as I work through a lot of this material. In case you didn't know, my Flow Circle patrons get a very special private lesson delivered straight to their email inbox every week that features ideas I'm currently working on or drills on the topic of their choosing. You can sign up for it over at patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi if that sounds like a good time to you. If you got anything out of this video, please leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe to help other people find it and to help my channel grow. This video would not be possible if not for the wonderful support of all of these amazing people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon, and they, along with the people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. Thank you one and all for your support. Do you like my videos? Do you like my flow sessions, vlogs, reviews, combos, and more? I'm on a mission to bring poi spinning and flow arts to the wider world and help people connect with their brains and their bodies. So help me do it. Head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. You can do that at the link in the description or the card that just popped up if you're watching on YouTube. There you can access a whole host of rewards and help me along in my mission. Do check that out please and thank you. If you dug this video and you'd like to see more like it, it is the second video in a series in which I'm trying to summarize everything I know about poi dance from the past few years. And I will link to the full playlist of videos in this series, both down in the description, as well as up on screen if you're watching on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching and make sure you get outside to dance with your poi today. I'll see you with a new video real soon. Take care.